Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today, we're making brie. Now, to be more specific, I'm actually making double brie. Now, brie is a bloomy, mould-ripened cheese uh, that stems from France. It's uh, normally made about 20 kilometres away from Paris, uh, but this is not authentic brie. This is Gab's special recipe, uh, and we're going to see how we go uh, through the ripening process to see if we can make a brie. Normally, brie is uh, quite difficult to make. It's an intermediate cheese, um, and it really does need the addition of quite a few different cultures to get it to that bloomy rind all over. It's normally between 40 to 20 centimetres in diameter and usually about an inch to an inch and a half, which is about five to seven and a half centimetres uh, in height. Now you can see I'm using some special moulds here. We'll see how that goes through the process. Anyway, let's get on and make the cheese. So you can see here that uh, I've got all of my equipment laid out, it's all been sanitised and I've got my three cultures that I'm using for this cheese, uh, which we'll talk about in a sec. I've got my liquid vegetable runner and my calcium chloride to help firm up the curd. So that was all sanitised by boiling in uh, hot water. I've also got my moulds, I'm only showing two there, I actually used three and you'll see that during the process. We'll talk about moulds a little bit later on. So the ingredients for this cheese, the double brie, is 8 litres or 8 quarts of cow's milk, at least 3.8% fat, 200 millilitres or 6.76 fluid ounces of pure cream, with a fat content of 40 to 45%, percent quarter teaspoon of Floridanica, 16th of a teaspoon of Penicillium candidum, 1 32nd of a teaspoon of Geotrichum candidum, a 1.25 ml or quarter of a teaspoon of calcium chloride in quarter of a cup of water and 1.25 ml or quarter of a teaspoon of liquid rennet in quarter of a cup of water and some cheese salt. I'm using 200 IMCU rennet which is slightly less than single strength. I'm going to turn the heat on now. I'm going to bring it up to temperature. Now I need to stir the cream in so the milk I'm using is unhomogenized milk. And the cream that I added is pure cream. Now this doesn't have any gelatin. Here in Australia, creams tend to have gelatin. This is pure cream pouring style. Um, it was about 40% fat, which is good for this type of cheese. Makes a good double brie. Now just a word of caution as we go through, this is the second time I've only ever made brie. I never, I actually filmed the first time, it didn't work out. Anyway, so we're going to bring the milk up to 32 Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. First of all, we'll add the Floridanica, which is quarter of a teaspoon. Now they come in big granules, which uh, tend to take a little bit of a time to rehydrate. So just sprinkle those over the surface of the milk. Then we're going to add in our two moulds. First mould is Penicillium candidum. Just sprinkle that over the top of the milk. And then the Geotrichum candidum. Now the reason we're adding Geotrichum candidum because it prevents skin slip, uh, which you tend to get if you just use Penicillium candidum. So I'm going to take all the utensils out now and we're going to allow that to rehydrate. So pop the lid back on and allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. So after five minutes we're going to give it a good stir for at least a minute just to make sure that the cultures are fully distributed throughout the milk. 
and to reincorporate the cream because the cream has a tendency to float to the top of the milk. So we're going to cover that up again and we're going to allow that to ripen for 30 minutes. So this is where the Floridanica converts some of the lactose in the milk into lactic acid and prepares it for the coagulation phase. Okay, pop the lid off and the first ingredient. Well, actually, first of all, we're going to check the temperature to make sure that uh, it's all okay. I've just stirred the cream back in there. Whoops. I dropped the spoon there, Gav. I'm just going to take the, check the temperature again. It has crept up by about a degree and a half, but that'll be okay. There's no heat on at the moment. I turned the heat off when I um, during the ripening phase. So I'm going to add in the calcium chloride because this milk's been pasteurised. Uh, it needs to have calcium chloride added to help the, with the uh, the curd set. So give that a good stir through for about a minute. And then we're going to add in the rennet that's been diluted in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. Make sure that all the dilutions are with non-chlorinated water because chlorine tends to upset the uh, curd set. So stir that for no more than a minute because after that it starts to set. So you can see there I'm actually not particularly trying to stir in a circle. I was uh, top to bottom stirring. Now I'm just stilling the milk there, just making sure it stopped moving before I pop the lid back on and allow that to set. So just cover that up so no fluff or dust gets in and we're going to allow that to set for 90 minutes so one and a half hours and we want a fairly firm curd set for this cheese okay so now we're going to check for a quick um, clean break just using my finger method with a clean pinky Pop it in and if the curd splits like that, it's not sloppy or anything, then you're ready to go. So let's talk a little bit about the moulds I'm going to be using today. So this one's a, uh, a bit of uh, uh, rainwater, um, so for potable water. So this is just a pipe and we've cut um, just some saw marks in there, so draining holes, uh, top and bottom. I can't remember where I got it. I didn't make it myself, but anyway, let's have a look at the measurements. So it's internal diameter, I suppose that's probably the best thing to look at, is about 14 and a half, so it's 145 mil, and what's that in inches? Just shy of, so it's at five and three quarter inches across, and the height of it is uh, 11 and a half centimeters, so what's that, 110 millimeters, and four and a half inches tall. So that's the middle size one. This is the large one. So this is uh, 21 and a half across, 21, so that's uh, 215 millimeters. And the height of the mold is 10 centimeters or four inches. And finally, these are normal camembert hoops uh, and they are 10 centimeters across, which is four inches, and they are nine centimeters high, uh, or three and a half inches. So they're the dimensions I used. If I had two of these baskets, I, I would prefer to use two of these baskets for the eight liters of milk, and that would, uh, two perfectly sized half round breeze, and that would be fine. Anyway, so they're the baskets I've used. A uh, bit of ingenuity with this one. Uh, but these ones you can pick up, they're fairly standard um, and uh, yeah, very good for, for making brie. So I've moved the pot over to the draining area and I'm using a skimmer and just cutting off slices of the curd. 
and I'll fill up um, them alternately. So we're just stacking those into the moulds. So you can see we don't actually cut the curds, we're just using the skimmer to do the slices. And this gives the brie a better texture. It does take a long time to drain, but uh, apparently this is how you make it traditionally. So just keep topping it up until you get to the top of the moulds. Good thing was, because of the long curd set, it was very firm. Um, so none of the curds leaked out of the sides of the two moulds that I was using. So you wait for it to drop a little bit and then you add some more curd in. Now this will take some time. So you just keep adding layers upon layers. Now I actually found that I had too much curd so I did add a small camembert uh, mould to the uh, to the mix in a second. Now we just wait every 30 minutes and then top it up again. You see it shrunk a little bit there so I'm going to ladle a few more layers on top. So we're going to allow those to uh, settle and shrink again. So I just set a timer for every 30 minutes to go back and top it up again. So you can see there I've added a small one in because I just had too much curds. By the time I got to the bottom, I thought, no, I'm filling these up too much. They're going to be too high. And I didn't want really, you know, high towered breeze. Um, so I added that uh, camembert hoop, which worked out well in the end. So after four hours of draining, or you know, ladling or draining, what have you, we're going to place a, a mat and a board over the top of the mould, and then we're going to flip it over for the first time. This was a bit uh, harrowing, I was a bit nervous when I did this because I wasn't too sure whether it had formed a rind properly um, you know, around the, the cheese. Anyway, this is the, the foolproof method to do it, is to make sure you've got a board on top and a mat and then simply with two hands, very firmly, we flip them over. This helps with draining. So we do the same thing for the other moulds as well. So I've done that with the the uh, the Papa Brie. And we'll do the next one with the Mama Brie. So I put a board on top there, just get the little one out of the way and we'll flip it over. Remember this hoop here I'm using is an open-ended, which is why I've got um, mats there on both ends. And be very careful when you peel it away, it tends to stick and uh, it'll eventually go down a bit. So with the little one, which we're going to grab in a second, just make sure that uh, there's no tears or anything like that in the, in the medium one there. Anyway, so I've got that at an angle so it kind of drains. And the small one, what I'm just using is a bamboo mat. Again, and fold that over in half. Just pop it on top and then just flip that over. Nice and simple. There we go. And that'll drop down. So they've all dropped down a fair bit. Now we're going to allow those to drain overnight on the first one. Yes, it worked, Gav. Just turn it over and go to bed. There we go. So leave that overnight. I think it was about 8 to 12 hours. Okay, so the next morning I've just uh, washed my hands with 
uh, hot soapy water and I've sprayed them with vinegar there. And we're just going to have a look. Oh, they look pretty good. So they're well drained at the moment. They're draining quite well. So I'm going to flip them over again. Just check to make sure that uh, the surface looks okay. Uh, just drain off any excess whey underneath there. Good thing about all the whey, it's running clear, so you're not losing any of the, uh, the proteins of the cheese or the, the milk fat down at the drain. So I'm going to flip it over again, put the sushi mat back on top, or bamboo mat, whatever you want to call it. Put the board on top and then give it another flip. So being just as careful as the first time, let's flip that over and hope it all settles down. I'm just putting a knife under the board there to put in a little bit of an angle so it drains off better. There we go. It's all down there. Good, so we'll do the... Uh, oops, got that one out of the way. Do the medium one next. So once again, two boards on top. Firm hands together and just give it a flip. And it will settle down in the mould. So what you're basically doing here is trying to form the skin of the cheese. Just press that down if it hasn't uh, settled down properly. So as I said, trying to form the skin of the cheese so uh, it's firm and it's not sloppy every time you turn it. That's why we're turning it, drains a lot better. Sometimes a little bit of, uh, of the curds will tear away and that's not so good just pat that back into place because next time you turn it it will reincorporate back into the bulk of the cheese so we're going to do the little one again or the baby brie now depending on how firm so i've just pulled it out of the mold in this instance it, it uh, held its shape okay and just uh, flipped it over that way give it a bit of a jiggle and it goes all the way down now the smaller one obviously drains a lot quicker than what the two larger ones are. Okay, we're going to allow those to settle again for another eight hours and cover them up if you need to, if you've got flies and stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to flip the cheeses again. So much fun, all this flipping. And you can notice there it hasn't fallen down. Oh, there we go. So, if it uh, looks a bit odd, then give it a bang. And that will settle it down a bit. Just like that. Okay, that's a bit rough there, Gav, but it's all working. Okay, so that's flipped over and it's shrinking very well. So I'm going to salt these and we're going to sprinkle over two teaspoons of cheese salt. This is non-iodized salt. So you can get flaky kosher salt, you can use sea salt, but as long as the granules aren't too coarse. So sprinkle those on and then just give it a light rub over the surface. Now I'm only doing one surface at the moment. We're not turning it over and doing the other side just yet because the salt's going to help drain more whey out as well. So it kind of per serves two purposes here. One for preserving and one for shrinking the cheese further. So we're just going to cover that one up and then we're going to do the other one. So I class this next one as a large cheese as well. Um, anyway, here we go, we're going to do some flipping in a second. Let's move that out of the way so we've got some space. Okay, so I'm going to flip the uh, the Mama Brie over. There we go. And that's probably shrunk to about half its original size, um, which is really good. So we're going to salt this one in a second as well. Using the same amount of salt. Oh, don't bang too hard, the camera jiggles. 
Okay, so we're going to use two teaspoons again of non-iodized salt. Sprinkle that over the surface. So just give it a little bit of a rub as well, just to make sure it's all over the surface of the cheese, over the top. Okay, I'm going to cover that one up again and move that out of the way. Now with the smaller ones, we don't add as much salt because obviously there's not as much cheese there. So we're going to add half a teaspoon over the top and then give it a flip and then do the bottom another half a teaspoon. So one teaspoon in total for this small cheese or baby brie. Okay, so I'll pop it out there. So I've salted it and I'll give it a bit of a rub now. There we go. So we need some more salt. So another half a teaspoon. Very awkward when you're holding a moist cheese. Then just rub that over and then rub it around the sides as well. All over. So this is the only time we salt the small ones. So if we're going to make petite brie, which is what these smaller ones are called, then we only salt them once, just do top and bottom and all around the sides, uh, all in one go. So we're going to allow all those cheeses now to drain for another 8 to 12 hours. Uh, in this case I think it was overnight. Just cover those up. So the next day uh, it's drained even further which is fantastic. That's what the salt does for us. So I'm attempting the very first time of taking this one out of the mold and flipping it over. There we go. So you notice if you can see that there, there's actually a tear in the bottom of it. It was stuck to the bottom of that mold when I flipped it over. But anyway, we're going to keep proceeding here. Not much I can do about it now. We're going to sprinkle another two teaspoons of salt over the two larger wheels. So just trying to repair that a little bit there. Anyway, so you get the salt, sprinkle it over the top again. Do the other one as well. There we go, and then we'll lightly rub that into the surface with clean hands. So at any time before you handle your cheese, make sure you've washed your hands in hot soapy water and you've sprayed them with white vinegar. That's what that spray bottle is up at the back there. Okay, so the whey will start to run freely again because of the extra salt. Okay, so we're just going to flip over this one. Or maybe the little one. Oh, no. There we go. We've got a board top and bottom. That's what I forgot to do. Okay, so and then you just turn that over. That shrinks down on the bottom. They're starting to pull away from the sides now of the moulds as well as they expel more whey. So much so that I can actually pull it off, which is good. Fairly firm, but I'll pop that back on. I'll just uh, err on the side of caution there. There we go. Let's not get too cocky there, Gav. Okay, two teaspoons of salt again all over the surface maybe a little bit less for this cheese there we go and then we'll give that a quick rub okay any bits of fluff or anything that's on there so that's all done there which is great and we don't need to re-salt the small one. Remember we did the top and bottom of that one earlier. So we're going to allow this to drain again. But you can flip the little one over. It's fine. It helps it drain. And that's firmed right up. That's really nice. Okay, so we're going to let that drain for another 8 to 12 hours. So basically it was time. I, flipped them. I did them uh, again after I got home from work. I mean my work clothes there. 
Okay, they're shrunk down even further, which is great. So we're going to flip the cheese over in the mould. Try and make me mind up what I'm doing there. So we're just going to take it out of the mould and then flip it over. So it's firmed up even more, which is fantastic. And we're just going to turn that over. There we go. Pretty hard to get these cheeses back in the moulds properly, especially these really wide moulds. So just be careful when you do that. Last thing you want to do is put a tear in it. And the little ones are so simple. So they firmed up so well. You just flip it over and pop it back in the mould and then give it a tap or a jiggle. Didn't quite want to go back in that time. Try that again, shall we? There we go. Give it a jiggle and it'll be firm and a tap. Okay, now this one has shrunk away from the sides fairly well, so I can just pop the mould off there and just turn it over. Remembering that they've all been salted now. I just slip the mould back over just for peace of mind. Last thing you want is the sides to be bulge out when you've taken them out too early. Anyway, so we flip those over. We're going to let them drain for another 8 to 12 hours. So remember, this is the end of the... Oh, I think it's the second day. Anyway, allow those to uh, drain overnight. So the next morning... I think they have stopped draining, which is fantastic. I'm going to place them into the sanitised uh, ripening boxes. That one comes away really freely now. That uh, shrunk away from the sides well. So I've got my uh, normal wide ripening box there with a little mat in the bottom. I'm going to pop the cheese on it. Make sure there's no bits on it. So I'm going to put two in. So I'm going to put the mama brie and the baby brie in the same box. As long as they're not touching and not touching the edges of the box, then the mould will develop fine. There'll be no issues whatsoever. So make sure they're not touching in the boxes. Okay, then we pop the lid on. And we're just going to put that aside for a second. Now we're going to do the um, the papa brie. So I'm going to use a little round board. But what I did discover is that the uh, larger wheel had a crack. So I decided to sanitise the mould again. Um, I washed it with hot soapy water and sanitised it with white vinegar. Just wiped it off and dried it. And I put the cheese back into the mould so it would firm up a little bit because I didn't want it to crack down the middle like I had the same issue with um, when I made brie the first time. Anyway, so I popped it back in there. And after a bit of flapping around, I soon figured out that the board in the mould wouldn't fit in there. Anyway, we're going to mature these for 10 days at 6 to 8 degrees Celsius, which is 43 to 46 Fahrenheit. Uh, with a um, relative humidity of 90 to 95 percent. Now the lid won't fit on clearly, so I had to take the board out. Make sure we turn the cheeses daily during this time because it prevents the cheese from sticking to the mat in the bottom of the drying box. So here is the uh, mama brie and the baby brie after three days of maturation. You can see that the white mold is starting to develop, which is fantastic. And there they are flipped over. The bottoms aren't uh, covered in mould, just a little bit moist. Now the larger one, starting to show signs of a bloom there on the top. Remember I left it in the, uh, the mould because I was a bit frightened that it was going to split in half. Anyway, that's turned over and you can see there are some cracks there. That's where it pulled away when I pulled it. They flipped it for the very first time out of the mould. So there's no mould growth on the bottom anyway, it's too moist. Now I've made a mistake there, 
I didn't have a mat underneath. Anyway, after seven days of daily flipping, you can see the white mold is fairly prominent. And that's where it's flipped over there. Not a full coverage yet, but pretty close. So on the larger, or the Papa Brie, uh, certainly mold around the sides, but not so much on the top. So a little bit concerned at this stage, it wasn't growing fast enough, and there it is flipped over again. So this is after 10 days of, um, of ripening. You can see there's a lovely mold all the way around. Um, if you push the sides in a little bit soft, so I'm a little bit concerned that they're getting overripe. So um, what we're gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to wrap them in, uh, in wrap now, or they won't ripen properly. So good mold coverage over the entire cheese for that one. Same for that one. Certainly good enough anyway. And yeah, starting to feel a bit soft around the edges. Now let's check out the big one. And a little bit soft, it's not soft, it's actually puffy there. So we'll just take that off the mat. Without hopefully ripping. Oh, it's stuck. This is not well. See it tore away some of the mold there. It's not a good thing. Anyway, we'll wrap it up. We'll see what happens uh, and we'll go from there. So I've got my um, micro perforated wrap there. This is covered in, this shiny side's covered in holes lots of tiny holes that have been perforated and there's two sheets kind of a paper so there's like a um, uh, it's like a, a baking paper um, so it'll allow the cheese to breathe so this size here this is about 28 centimeters by 28 this is just a cut down one and basically we're going to put the little one into it as best we can. So I've got my trusty tape gun. So that again. And this is the pain. Not only they have a sticker on there. Anyway, that's good enough. I can write on there if necessary. So we're going to put that I'm just out of the way at the moment. And we'll get a bigger sheet. So this is, a, I think it's about 42 centimetres by, um, uh, by 42. So we'll put the big one on there now ever so delicately. See it's cracked away. Anyway, we'll put it on there, wrap it up. I'm not very good at this. There we go. <laughs> That's as good as that one gets, I think. And then for the final one. 
probably don't need as much. It's just but we'll see. So we'll do So with this paper, you always put the um, the paper side down, not the shiny side. The shiny side's on the surface. a lot better than the other ones. There we go, so that's wrapped as well. So we're going to put these into the normal fridge now to slow down the ripening um, and hopefully that'll recover and then we'll get a paste, uh, a smooth paste all the way through. So they're going to go in the fridge, the normal kitchen fridge now. So we'll keep it in there for another two weeks, maybe three. The smaller one will develop first, followed by the, uh, the middle size one and then the, the large one. So I think you'll agree, a nice, fairly simple process. It's the aging part you've got to get right. I don't think I had the temperature of my cheese cave down low enough. I had it down at 11 degrees Celsius. I probably need to go a little bit lower so it ripens a bit, bit slower. Anyway, these are going into the fridge now, the normal kitchen fridge, uh, for another two weeks. They've been ripening now uh, for 14, I don't know, about 13 days. Uh, way, which may be a little bit too much, but I was having trouble getting the, uh, the white bloom over the cheeses. Anyway, enough said about that. We'll put these in the fridge, as I said, and then we'll check them in uh, two to three weeks. The small one, which we've got here, um, I'm labeling, labeling the, uh, this is the baby brie. So uh, this is the mama brie. And then this beast here, is the Papa Brie. Anyway, so we could kind of say that it's the tale of Cheesy Locks and the Three Brie's. <laughs> anyway, don't forget that you can uh, see more of this content if you subscribe to the channel and check out the kit that we could use for this. We could use the Camembert kit with an additional geotrike and candidum uh, over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.